In this lesson, we'll take a close look at the on-screen calculator that's available on the GRE. However, before we do that, I'd like to point out that the vast majority of quantitative questions can be solved faster without using a calculator. So you should use the calculator only after you've explored other, faster options, such as rounding and estimation. Now we'll learn all sorts of alternatives to the calculator throughout the math modules. But for the time being, just keep in mind that the GRE is designed to test your number sense and your logic skills, not your ability to carry out lengthy calculations or use a calculator. All right, now that I've made my argument against using the on-screen calculator, let's see how this works. To begin, while you're taking the test, you'll see an icon that looks something like this. By clicking on this icon, you'll call up the calculator that looks something like this. To operate the calculator, you can either use the mouse to click the buttons directly on the screen, or if you wish, you can use your keyboard to enter the values. Now, as you can see, the calculator has only the most basic operations. And I should point out that the display holds only eight digits. So any calculation that requires more than eight digits will yield an error message. Okay, now let's examine the buttons beginning with these ones. This one is for division, this one's for multiplication, then subtraction, and then addition. This next one is called the change sign button. It changes the sign of whatever number happens to be in the display window at that time. So if there's a three in the display and you click the change sign button, the three will turn into negative three. Conversely, if there's a negative 6 in the display window and you click the change sign button, the negative 6 will turn into positive 6. Now, an important feature of this button is that if you want to enter a negative number, you must enter the positive version first and then use the change sign button to make it negative. For example, if you want to multiply 3 by negative 5, you must click 3, then multiply, then 5, then to turn the 5 into negative 5, click the change sign button, and then click equals to get a product of negative 15. Now before we examine more buttons, I should point out that the on-screen calculator follows the required order of operations. So for example, if you enter 2 plus 4 times 5, the calculator will multiply the 4 and the 5 first, and then add the 2 to give an answer of 22. Given this, it's important to be careful when you perform longer calculations. For example, if you want to evaluate this expression, entering 30 divided by 2 plus 3 will yield an incorrect value of 18, because the calculator will obey the order of operations and divide 30 by 2 first, and then add 3 to get 18. To correctly evaluate this expression, we can use the brackets buttons. If we perform our calculations by pressing these buttons, the calculator will yield the correct value of 6. Okay, moving along, the next button to discuss is the square root button. This button automatically calculates the square root of whatever number is in the display. So, for example, to calculate the square root of 49, just enter 49, and once you click the square root button, the calculator will automatically display the result. Okay, so that takes care of the buttons that perform operations on numbers. Now let's take a look at these two buttons. They both allow you to clear all or part of your entries. To begin, this button is the clear all button. It removes the number from the display and erases any calculations performed up to that point. Use this button when you want to start a calculation all over again. This next button is the clear entry button. It removes the last thing you entered into the calculator. For example, let's say you want to add 32 and 71. So you enter 32, then plus, and then you accidentally enter 74 instead of 71. At this point, you can press the Clear All button and start all over again, or you can click the Clear Entry button, which essentially erases your last entry, but keeps everything before that last entry. So the calculator still remembers that you entered 32 plus, and it's now waiting for your next entry. So if you now enter 71 and press equals, you'll see that the correct sum is 103. Okay, the last set of buttons to discuss are these ones up here. They allow us to store and retrieve numbers in the calculator's memory. We'll begin with the memory add button. This button has two different roles. The first time you press it, it saves whatever number is in the display at that time. To demonstrate this, let's enter 7 
and then click the memory add button. At this point, the calculator has stored the number 7 in its memory. Notice that this M up here indicates that there's a number stored in memory. OK, now let's press Clear All to erase the display and continue. Next, we have the Memory Recall button. It displays whatever number is currently stored in the memory. So, for example, if we later want to multiply 10 by 7, we first enter 10, then click Multiply, and then when we press the Memory Recall button, our saved number, which is 7, appears on the screen. And from here, we press Equals to get the product 70. OK, let's clear the display and move on. At this point, I want to return to the Memory Add button. As I mentioned earlier, this button plays two roles. If you press it when there is no other number stored in the memory, the calculator stores whatever number is in the display window. However, if you press the Memory Add button when there is already a number stored in the memory, the calculator takes whatever number is currently displayed and adds it to whatever number is stored in memory. Then it takes the sum of those two numbers and stores it in the memory. Let's see how this works. Now remember that the number 7 is currently stored in the memory. So if we enter a 4 and then press Memory Add, the 4 is added to the 7 in memory and then the sum of 11 is stored in the memory, replacing what used to be stored in the memory. So if we now click the Memory Recall button, we'll see that 11 is now stored in the memory. Okay, the last memory button to discuss is the Memory Clear button. It erases whatever number is stored in the calculator's memory. So if we click this button, we see that the M that was once here has now disappeared. Also, if we later click the Memory Recall button, we can see that the 11 that we stored earlier is no longer there. Instead, the display shows a 0, which is the default value when there are no values stored in the memory. Okay, the last button to discuss is the Transfer Display button. It transfers the calculator's displayed number to the answer box in a numeric entry question. This feature is available only when you're working on a numeric entry question. All other times, the button is grayed out. So let's say you're working on a numeric entry question, and after performing some calculations, your answer is in the display window. From here, just press the Transfer Display button, and that displayed value will appear in the answer box. Now, as you can see, this is a convenient feature, but you should be careful when using this button. If the question asks you to round your answer, say to the nearest tenth, and this is the number in the display window, then pressing the Transfer Display button will transfer the entire number to the entry box. And if you fail to round the number to the nearest tenth, it will be scored as incorrect. So just be careful when using the Transfer Display button. OK, so that's pretty much how the on-screen calculator works. Be sure to test out this calculator long before test day. You'll find it in the free PowerPrep 2 practice test software available from the official GRE website.